Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book Barbarians at the Gate, The Fall of RJR Nabisco. Reading this title, you may wonder what does a business war have to do with barbarians? Actually, barbarians here doesn't refer to cruel invaders like Attila the Hun. In fact, it refers to capitalists who conduct hostile takeovers without consent from the company's shareholders and managers. The most aggressive capital acquisition in history is the subject of this bookie. The aggressors utilized a brutal hostile takeover approach. The poor little thing that was acquired was RJR Nabisco. You might not be familiar with the company, however, you've probably heard of its flagship product Oreo. Known as the Biscuit Trust, Nabisco was a pioneer in the cookie industry and once dominated the United States cookie market. It was the first company that changed cookie packaging from buckets to standard paper boxes. Before Nabisco, cookies had been a distinctly local product. It was Nabisco that first promoted its products throughout the whole country through national marketing campaigns. However, all good things come to an end. By the 1970s, Nabisco had totally fallen. So, how did a declining cookie company become connected to the tobacco tycoon RJR and eventually merge with it? How did several bidding teams behave in the most aggressive capital acquisition war in history? Which team won the takeover war and how did it do so? Barbarians at the Gate, the fall of RJR Nabisco recreates the whole story of the takeover. Two authors wrote the book. Brian Burrow is a best-selling author and longtime writer for the Wall Street Journal. Now he is a contributing correspondent for Vanity Fair. Burrow has written five books, including Barbarians at the Gate, and Public Enemies, America's Greatest Crime Wave and the Birth of the FBI 1933-34. He won the Gerard Loeb Award for Excellence in Financial Journalism three times. John Helliar is a columnist for Bloomberg News. He is a former writer for the Wall Street Journal Fortune and ESPN. When writing the book, they conducted over 100 interviews with all the major figures involved and various minor ones in order to dig into the context of this infamous event. The authors have recreated the most famous Wall Street merger and acquisition war in history using accurate and authentic material as well as vivid and exciting descriptions. The book comprehensively explores how the board acquired and controlled the company's ownership. It is a must-read book for every corporate manager and professional interested in Wall Street. Next, we will share with you the essence of this book in the following three parts. First, RJR Nabisco's development and expansion. Second, why did RJR Nabisco become the target of a leveraged buyout? Third, Three Barbarians Contest Before explaining how RJR Nabisco became the target of Wall Street Barbarians, let's first take a brief look at its development and expansion. We all know that a company's development often suffers from bumps in the road. Nabisco was no exception. After the founder Adolphus Green passed away, the company began to decline. Although there was a slight improvement for a while, the company was still declining in the late 1970s after a half-century of growth. The new chairman Robert Scaborough became interested in a food company named Standard Brands to turn Nabisco around. Let's first talk about Standard Brands. Standard Brands was founded by J.P. Morgan in 1928 with the merger of several companies. For many years, the company had stuck to old patterns without any reform or innovation toward its business problems. In the 1970s, the faltering food company had a new chairman Ross Johnson. Johnson was fearless in breaking tradition. He overhauled the company, laid off redundant employees, promoted a large number of innovative young people, and reorganized the company twice a year. However, the results were not well received. The public criticized these strategies as ineffective. Their new products did not receive a satisfactory response, and their product life cycles became shorter and shorter. The company was called the most spectacular